This episode of The Italian Mentor is brought to you by Azienda Agricola Molinello. And Tenute Giotto. Italian style, Italian fashion, Italian food, Italian design here in New York. This is The Italian Mentor, and I am Gabriella, your host in this journey of Made in Italy. Hello everyone, here we are again, the Italian Mentor in New York City. Today we will be talking about something that is really close to the Italian spirit, olive. Because olive and olive oils are at the heart of the Italian cooking tradition. They say the gods sooner or later disappear, the temples will turn to ruins, but the olive trees will remain and keep on giving us olives. So olives are a symbol of hope and solidity. Come with us to find out more. We are here with our expert, Walt Potenza. Welcome to the Italian Mentor. Thank you, thank you for having me, Gabriella. So, how important is olive oil for the US market? Well, as you know, America is practically new to uh, the extra virgin olive oil. We talk about about 30 years. This is a country raised on uh, animal fats, such as butter primarily. But through education, we've been doing a great job in communicating. And uh, the consumption has increased in the past 20 or so years, almost tripled. Because maybe now they know how important is olive oil for our bodies. Tell us about this. Well. Uh, through several researchers by experts across the world. We do know that olive oil is historically part of the Mediterranean diet. So it has something that has been adopted here. And through research, we have found that olive oil, of course, it's loaded with antioxidants, which is very good for us, for our body. It has several, several health, um, uh, should I say, uh, benefits. Uh, First and foremost, uh, anti-aging, as you know, that's important. And uh, still there are a lot of false myths about olive oil. Uh, the number one question among consumers is, is the color of olive oil important as a quality? Uh, it, the color is not important. The color may vary based on the territory where the olive has grown. So it's perfectly normal to have a, an oil like Redoro from the Garda area being a little bit lighter as opposed to an oil from Sicily, much darker. Secondly, uh, most people will say that uh, the myth of not cooking with olive oil, false. Extra virgin olive oil can reach comfortably 391 Fahrenheit. So you and can fry, actually you fry. You can fry and you can get a great response. Certainly, you can have a fragrance and have some uh, olive left in the flavor. Third myth, please store olive oil, not on the counter, but in a cool place. A bottle of olive oil, sometimes we don't realize, but the lights actually damage the flavor. So a cool place, not a cool cold. cool place, not cool. cool. Exactly. How, many, how many degrees? Well, we say in about 50, 55 Fahrenheit. Olive oil has a tendency of oxidizing right through the bottle. In addition to that, when the label is large, it protects it. Another myth is the date. Yes, olive oil can become rancid and uh, the consumer... Yeah, but it's, it's written on the label, so you just have to look at the label. Exactly. The consumer sometimes don't know the difference between the taste and the rancidity of the olive oil. Uh, and there are many more. Uh, one For of instance, them, calories. We do know 
Italians consume three to four tablespoons a day. You can select a variety of olive oils and use them appropriately, whether you do grilling, whether you do baking, whether you do roasting, poaching. Uh, and so olive oil can be used raw as a drizzle signature fat, can be used for frying, and it can be used for a variety of application. And of course, we talked about health and wellness in terms of cosmetics. Can you tell us about the production process uh, for, for producing the olive oil, starting from the olive tree up to the bottle? Well, as you know, all great quality extra virgin olive oils, uh, they use the traditional method of hand picking. The process of hand picking and immediately running to a press, the time allocated is very short, it's very brief, so that the olive doesn't begin the oxidation. Once it's in a press, of course, there is the, the, the centrifugal method which ex presses the oil out and it divides the oil from the sansa, which is the pulp. And the third process is to remove the water from the olive oil. And that's the olive oil? That's the extra virgin, it is pure consistency. First, cold press. You press it, the first juice, it's considered extra virgin. And now, after describing all these kinds of oils, we have to taste oil. I couldn't wait for that. So here we are to make a little tasting of this wonderful oil. So please, chef, go ahead. Pour the oil. Go ahead. Can you tell me anything that you taste? I feel a burning sensation in the back of my throat. Ah, we call it pizzica la gola, we call it in Italian. A little bite in the back of the throat. That's because the olives are fresh, young, they're filled with antioxidants, and they're very good for you, of course, at first the cold press, extra virgin. This is for you. Anything you can tell me about the, uh, the uh, flavors of the olive oil? Uh, let me give you a hint. Can you pick up, other than the olive, can you pick up like fresh cut grass, almonds, artichokes? Yes, yes, I, I do taste that, the almonds. Excellent, that's because the olives sometimes grow near areas where there are those elements and they are expressed inside through the roots, through the process of nature inside the olive themselves. So final test, do you know what this logo means? No, I don't. Well, that's a DOP, denomination of a protected origin. What it means is an emblem, it's a signal, it's a logo meant for you, the consumer, to know, to be sure that the olives that are inside a bottle are from a specific territory. So essentially what we're trying to say is that every olive oil that grow, that are bottled and so on, that logo signifies excellence, quality and premium. So, as a consumer, I think that you ought to know that. That's why they put it on a bottle. Buongiorno, everybody. We're here at the Rosso Pomodoro today to do some great tasting of olive oil. Um, my name is Simone Falco. I'm the chef owner of Rosso Pomodoro in the West Village. And the first dish that we're making is a focaccia. Pod olio, some olive oil. Pala. Bye. Stacca. Perfetto. Just 90 seconds, that's the time it takes to cook the focaccia. Then after that, we're gonna dress it with some fresh cherry tomatoes, uh, oregano from Molise, and some sea salt. And obviously, olive oil. Look at that. Perfect, crunchy, crispy. We make like the stella shape, and we dress all the ingredients row on top. This is what we call the Stella. And I have to say it's one of our best um, appetizers. People really enjoy that. So very fresh and simple. So we're gonna put some olive oil in the tomato. We're gonna get extra oregano, maybe a sea salt, and the guys. Touch of basil in the middle. And voila, buon appetito.
Una Prola è eh, oggi il più grande consorzio olivicolo eh, d'Europa. Contiamo al nostro attivo circa 189.000 soci che chiaramente si, si associano a noi per poter eh, avere eh, un punto di riferimento in quella che è l'obiettivo principale, semplificare eh, il modello organizzativo territoriale del mondo olivicolo. Eh, abbiamo immaginato oh, di eh, poter costruire un modello tracciato sulla, sulla filiera olivicola. Quindi non soltanto i produttori, ma i trasformatori frantoiani e perché no, se possibile, anche eh, qualche realtà industriale che possa scommettere sul riposizionamento del prodotto 100% italiano in qualità di prodotto playmaker di mercato. Abbiamo come obiettivo principale quello di poter eh, semplificare l'aggregazione nazionale, eh, quello di eh, mettere a disposizione dell'aggregazione eh, degli strumenti che eh, permettano di migliorare la produzione agricola, olivicola, e di migliorare la trasformazione del prodotto, puntare sicuramente a un'eccellentissima qualità del prodotto 100% italiano e perché no valorizzare il prodotto sfuso ed imbottigliato. Well, extra virgin olive oil is the essence of Italy. I do know that there are different types of olive oils depending on the regions of the world. Um, I, I do enjoy Italian olive oil a lot. Extra virgin olive oil I think is something we still need to work on in terms of education. I think people are still used to a product that in terms of price is not where you're at in terms of quality. I don't know anything about extra virgin olive oil, to be honest. I just know that I really like it with bread. <laughs> I'm not familiar with any olive oil, Italian, Italian olive oils. When it comes to extra virgin olive oil, um, America has a lot to learn, but I think that they would benefit a lot from it, and I'm sure that they would greatly appreciate learning more about it. I think extra virgin olive oil in the U.S. is, well, here in New York especially, is taking hold um, more and more. You have stores like Italy and uh, different stores of that nature that are doing a great job at um, bringing Italian olive oil um, to the U.S. I think that people in America generally in New York City are a little bit afraid of the bolder flavors but I actually appreciate them and so when you get a real great Italian extra virgin olive oil it makes your meal much more enjoyable. <laughs> So the first thing I'm going to do is pour some organic olive oil for you. And I'm going to ask each of you to pick up the sample and smell it and just kind of tell me what comes to your mind when you experience it. It's very light, the smell. Yeah, yeah, it's got a nice and natural. Sort of a nice, easy mm -hmm. scent to it. Not too strong. Now, let's try a taste test, and if you can take a piece of bread and dip some into the olive oil, and tell me what you think. It is nice and mild. It mm -hmm. goes well with the bread. It's very light, though, I have to say, and easy to eat, it seems like. Like, you can keep eating it, and it's not too pungent. It's one of the best that I've tasted, definitely. We're going to try our Italiano, and I would ask you again to smell and tell me what you think. Yeah, see this one is different. Much I think stronger. It's, yeah. Extremely delicious. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell there's a lot of dimension to this olive oil and the flavors develop on your palate a bit more. So as, what did you notice? Mm -hmm. Is there anything that stood out? I really like um, the taste it leaves in your mouth after I trying say, it. Yeah, I think it lingers more in a good way. And here we are with Lucy Sheehan, she's the ambassador of Zucchi Extra Virgin Olive Oils products here in the US. What are the characteristics of a very good and excellent olive oil and how do we recognize one? There are different things that are required to label something an extra virgin olive oil. It can't have any defects, 
Um, it's tested rigorously. What I would say to you, certainly, and to, to all of your viewers, is that the first thing they should do is look for extra virgin olive oil on the label. Could you talk uh, about Zucchi Company? Because Zucchi Company is a very well-known company in Italy. Uh, it's an old one, but uh, I think here in the U.S. it's a new company. Yes, it's very new. Um, Zucchi's been, um, it's a family-owned company. The seventh generation of Zucchi's is um, running the company now. They work very closely with the farms that they select to choose just the right ones and then create unique blends. These oils were designed for the U.S. market. Um, the first one and the mildest one is Sinfonia. Sinfonia is a general all-purpose everyday olive oil. The next one is organic and organic oils are extremely popular in the U.S. It's wonderful for drizzling on asparagus or vegetables. It's uh, for very delicate foods, a delicate fish, but it's a, a very beautiful oil. Um, the next one is sweet and fruity. Um, and then, of course, we wouldn't be an Italian olive oil without a 100% Italian. So Italiano is its actually the most popular as far as what's uh, been said. <laughs> yes, why are we surprised? What I would urge um, a shopper to do is try and taste different oils. Take advantage of the, the nuances in each one. We learned so much about wine over the last 30 or 40 years. You have uh, over 700 different cultivars of olives that are grown for olive oil around the world. Italy has almost half of them. So why should we be surprised that, that Italians would be the experts on all of this? Can you tell us about the traceability of olive oil and what the U.S. consumers think about it? Absolutely. This is a huge issue with U.S. consumers and it's all about trust, particularly younger consumers who want to know what is actually in the bottle or package that they are buying. So traceability or transparency, those are the buzzwords that everybody uses. Um, uh, are many consumers, when they go shopping, they want to know by reading the label what's in there. One of the things that Zuki felt was very important um, is that they have created um, an application that allows the consumer to find out where the olives that they use in that particular bottle um, are grown. So this is, this is really big news. Um, and I, I'm very excited about it because um, more and more um, consumers have the issue of trust. And they're not used to seeing that kind of information from olive oil companies. Thank you, Lucy, for all the important information you gave to our viewers. And now we go back to Italy to know more about extra virgin olive oil. L'app Green Essence nasce all'interno di un progetto che si chiama True Italian Taste e che è stato finanziato dal Ministero dello Sviluppo Economico proprio per far conoscere al consumatore estero tutto quello che è la forza il, della cucina italiana, dei prodotti italiani dell'agroalimentare. Green Essence è un'app che nasce dalla collaborazione tra Asso Camerestero, che è titolare di questo progetto, e Unaprol, una collaborazione che è nata proprio all'insegna di far conoscere al consumatore la ricchezza dell'olio italiano. L'olio eh, lo troviamo spesso anche sulle tavole del consumatore estero, però non si conosce effettivamente quella che è l'origine di quest'olio, non si conosce spesso anche l'uso, il migliore uso di quest'olio e non si conosce tutto il valore della tracciabilità e che è data ed è garantita dalle certificazioni che gli oli italiani eh, hanno. Eh, non dobbiamo dimenticare eh, che il, in Italia esistono quasi 400 cultivar eh, autoctone 
di cui eh, 42 sono DOP e eh, 4 sono IGP. Sono certificazioni che forse al consumatore potranno non dare eh, come dire, la sensazione eh, diciamo, di, eh, qual, di quello che è il processo che c'è dietro, ma grazie all'app che noi abbiamo realizzato intendiamo fornire loro anche questa qualità proprio perché dietro l'olio non c'è solo qualcosa di buono ma c'è qualcosa di sano, di sicuro, qualcosa che rimanda alla tradizione dei territori. We finish this olive oil extravaganza with uh, an olive oil ice cream, or I would say gelato, uh, which is basically a fior di latte made um, with olive oil. It's a very, very unique ice cream, and you believe it or not, we'll finish the olive oil ice cream with a touch of the zucchini sweet and uh, fruity, which I think will bring up much more the flavor of the milk. Uh, if you want, it's a kind of sweet burrata that you're eating. So, olive oil and a touch of salt. And here we are. We enjoyed very much the olive oil we, we tried today. It was my first time eating gelato with olive oil and uh, I was skeptical at the beginning, but I really enjoyed it and I really like it. My favorite olive oil among those on the table is this one, the Veneto Valpocello. I'll probably pronounce it badly. It really, it, it gave me something that added to what I was eating. I tried it with the bread, I tried it with the, with the mozzarella, and I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm very familiar with extra virgin olive oil. I cook with it all the time. I've really enjoyed the uh, extra virgin olive zucchini one, but the Italiano rather than the organic. I don't know. Um, it felt it soaked up into the bread a little bit more, and I was able to have more flavor than uh, the organic version. Today we have learned so many things about olive oils uh, from all our experts. So now we would like to make a recap of all we have learned with uh, the most important tips you can uh, tell to our audience. What to see, what to read inside the label. So you can accomplish this right in the grocery store when you pick up the bottle. Take the most important thing I believe to look at is the sell-by or the harvest date. And really uh, look for any oil that is older than two years old, don't buy it. You can use uh, olive oil not only for cooking. Uh, also for your skin, skin care. It's wonderful for your hair in the dry winter weather. It's wonderful to moisturize your hair. And um, in a bath, I love it. It's just the best. Where do you store your olive oil? Oh, you know where I store mine. In a cool, dark place in a cabinet. And I bring it out when I'm cooking it. Is it true that olive oil is not only proper for Italian recipes, but also for American recipes? Of course, uh, everything. And I think that this is one of the, the things that most people don't know, how versatile olive oil is. Many people don't know you can bake with olive oil. Why it is so important not to look only for olive oil, but for extra virgin olive oil? Well, in a word, it's the best. Um, it is the, the first pressing of those olives so you really get the juice from it. And other types are degraded. They're, they're of less value to you health-wise, flavor-wise. Thank you so much, Lucy. Thank you. I enjoyed it. At the end of our episode dedicated to Italian extra virgin olive oil, we are with Simone Falco. You have a, a particular point of view because you have many customers, I mean, almost all your customers who are Americans. So, do they know something about olive oil? I think, you know, it's challenging. I think we are on a mission here to let them understand, I mean, nothing against the butter, enough butter, let's move to the olive oil. Uh, we don't use butter in the restaurant. 
uh, we make our cake with olive oil or make our pizza with olive oil and uh, particularly at home I don't use it. It's good things that they start understanding what all your extra virgin and oliva means, extra virgin olive oil means. And as you said, you prepare all your dishes with olive oil, yeah. even cakes. So it's very simple, it's one cup of flour, it's one cup of sugar, it's one cup of milk, half a cup of extra virgin olive oil, just a pinch of salt, some baking soda, baking powder, and it's 40 minutes at 300 Fahrenheit, and that's it. And I will show you how it is. It's like fluffy and delicious, very simple, healthy, look, very soft. And you just serve like that. You put a little bit of powdered sugar on top and your kids can have a, for a snack, for a breakfast. So, Gabriela. So we, I think this is the perfect end for our episode. Just let's follow Simona's uh, recipe and uh, can I try? Of course, okay, buon appetito. Bye. Goodbye and arrivederci. Alright, so who tastes first? Ready? Couldn't be closer to the <laughs> ready. Hundred percent guaranteed. I like that about you. Not a problem. This episode of The Italian Mentor is brought to you by Azienda Agricola Molinello. And Tenute Giotto.